Okay, hello and welcome to another tutorial. As you can see, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different this time around and actually starting with a clip from the final season of The Sopranos where the characters are discussing the concept of EBITDA in the context of a company sale. We've covered this topic many times before, but I want to do more of a focus lesson here and go into some nuances. But let's start with the clip first. Frankly, Jason, I don't think you should sell the business right now. There's a lot of potential buyers out there. Let me get out of the hospital, run the numbers, get you the best price. No, Chinelli's offer seemed fair. There's lots of things to take into account. You even know what your habit is? My what? Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Gives the true picture of a company's profitability. So, as Paulie just alluded to there, some people would say that EBITDA is the true picture of a company's profitability, and we're going to examine it here and see if that is accurate. Now, if you want the tutorial and writing here, along with all the screenshots, the PDFs and the Excel model, you can go to this URL. Just look up our accounting page on our knowledge base and go to EBITDA. I'll also pin this long URL below in the comments so you can get to it directly. It'll be the first comment there. So the short answer is that EBITDA or earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization is a proxy for the core recurring business cash flow from operations before capital structure, taxes, and reinvestment needs. And by before, what we really mean is that you ignore all of these things when calculating it. So you pretend that the company's debt versus equity doesn't matter, their tax structure and tax rate do not matter, and reinvestment into the business with capital expenditures and working capital also do not matter. Now to calculate EBITDA, you want to start with EBIT or operating income on the income statement, and then you always add the depreciation and amortization from the cash flow statement. And you do this because the DNA on the cash flow statement is the all-inclusive number, and it reflects spending from a prior period, cash outflows from a prior period that are being recognized over a long period of time, but which is not actual spending in this period that we're looking at. You also adjust for any clear non-recurring expenses, such as restructuring, that have directly reduced the company's operating income, and you add them back. So to give you an example, let's pull up Target's financial statements here. I'm also going to pull up the accompanying Excel file. And we are going to go to their 2020, their fiscal 2020 numbers here and start calculating EBITDA. So we want to go to the income statement and you can see they're directly telling us that the depreciation and amortization here is not all inclusive. So we do want to get this operating income number, but we actually want to take the depreciation from the cash flow statement. So the operating income here is 6539 if you look at their numbers. And then to get the depreciation and amortization, let's go down to the cash flow statement, a few screens here, and it is 2,485, really meaning 2.5 billion for 2020. So let's enter that in Excel. 2485. Now we don't immediately see any non-recurring charges here. There are some gains and losses, but these do not actually affect the company's operating income. These should be below operating income within the other income or expense line in most cases. And for reasons we'll get into later, we are not going to adjust for something like stock-based compensation or deferred taxes. So just looking at the statements, we'd say there are no real non-recurring charges here. And therefore, EBITDA is simply EBIT plus depreciation and amortization from the cash flow statement. And that is how we do it for Target. Now, with the non-recurring expenses, you have to be careful because many companies like to label their expenses non-recurring, but they are actually recurring if you look at it from year to year. Many people criticize EBITDA because they point out that it is actually quite different from cash flow from operations, even though it's supposed to be a proxy for cash flow from operations. Warren Buffett famously once said, does management think the tooth fairy pays for capital expenditures? And this is another criticism that you completely ignore the company's capital expenditures and working capital needs, and they could be significant for many, many companies. And so it's not at all an accurate picture of the company's actual business cash flow. All that is true. And Warren Buffett is right that CapEx is extremely important, but it sort of misses the point because the point of EBITDA is not to accurately capture the full cash flows from everything. It's to quickly compare companies and efficiently do so with a standard that everyone knows and recognizes. So that's the short answer. Here's what we're going to go through in more detail here with timestamps. So first, I'll say a little bit more about the EBITDA calculation. Then we'll go into the meaning and do some comparisons between Target and Best Buy. Then we'll talk about whether EBITDA is actually close to cash flow from operations, and if so, why it is, and if not, why it isn't. And then we'll talk about the pros and cons of EBITDA overall and go back to that quote from The Sopranos. So with the calculations, 
I think the main thing to be careful of here, besides adding the DNA from the cash flow statement, is that you actually want to ignore most of the other items in cash flow from operations in most cases. Items like stock based compensation affect the company's share count, and items like gains and losses do not actually affect EBIT, so it doesn't really make sense to add either of these back. So if we are looking at Target's statements, for example, depreciation and amortization is a simple timing difference. The company spent money on capital expenditures previously, but they're simply recognizing that prior expense over a longer period, over many years here. So it's fine to adjust for something like that that's just timing. But stock-based compensation is fundamentally different because it's not just timing. It actually changes the share count of the company and their valuation indirectly, or at least their per share valuation. Other items like deferred taxes, gains and losses, the issue here is that none of these actually affect the company's operating income unless you have something very strange going on. So if these affect items like other income and expense that are below operating income, you're not going to add them back when you adjust in this scenario. You have to be careful with non-recurring versus recurring expenses as well. And I'll show you an example right now if you go to Best Buy's financial statements. They actually list restructuring charges here as something separate from SG&A, something separate from their normal operating expenses. But if you look, it occurs in one, two, three out of three of the past three years. So we would say that this is not a non-recurring expense. This is actually a recurring expense for the company. And similarly, if you go and look at their cash flow statement, they list it as a non-cash expense, an add back, which it may be, but it's also not a non-recurring charge. So we would not actually recommend adjusting for restructuring in this case. Now, if you want to go beyond this, you could certainly go through the full statements and look up the notes to the statements and the discussion and analysis. It really just depends on how much time and effort you can put in and how important it is. For a quick scan, you're not going to do this. For a quick screen of companies, it's pointless. But if it's for an important deal or for an important client, sure, you might take the extra time and actually go through and do this for all the companies you're looking at. Let's go to part two and talk about what EBITDA actually means. So as I said, it's mostly a comparison metric. You're comparing the core business cash flow of similar companies, but you're ignoring their capital structures, their taxes, and their reinvestment requirements. Now, sometimes you want to do that, and in other cases, you don't want to do that. So like any tool, it just depends on what you are trying to use it for and whether it matches that purpose. It can tell you things like whether one company is more or less efficient, what exactly is driving the growth or decline in the company's core business. It can also tell you if a company is changing by itself or if the entire industry is changing. You can also use EBITDA in valuation multiples like enterprise value to EBITDA, and you can use it to assess how much debt a company can carry and service over time. So if we go back to Excel here and just look at Best Buy and Target, overall, Best Buy's EBITDA margins, so EBITDA as a percent of revenue, are lower than Target's margins. So on the surface, we would say that they appear to be a little bit less efficient overall than Target. However, the interesting thing here is that if you look at their EBITDA, it goes up in year two and then down again in year three. And then Target follows the exact same pattern. It goes up in year two and then down in year three. So this might be a case where the entire industry, a lot of retailers had something like that happen. It could be something specific to these two. We're not sure. But you could look at those types of trends and see how they show up in other similar companies as well. But it's always used for this type of comparison. You could also turn these into valuation multiples and value target or best buy with them. Now let's talk about this issue of EBITDA and cash flow from operations. So the short answer is that sometimes they are close, but usually they are not because interest makes a huge impact. Taxes can be quite significant and the change in working capital, especially for retailers like these can also be quite significant. So I have these two graphs here, these waterfall charts. Best Buy has EBITDA of 2.7 billion in the most recent year, but cash flow from operations is only 1.8 billion. Target is at 6.5 billion in EBITDA, but cash flow from operations is only 4 billion. So there are many differences here. And if you go into Excel, you can go and take a look and see what the main differences are. The change in working capital certainly makes a really big impact for both companies. The cash taxes that both companies are paying also makes an impact, although more so for Target than Best Buy. And the interest expense also makes an impact. It's pretty minimal for Best Buy, but for Target, it actually explains a lot of the difference between EBITDA and cash flow from operations. Now, you could try to fix this by using metrics like EBITDA minus CapEx or EBITDA plus or minus the change in working capital minus CapEx. You could also subtract taxes, but you have to be careful because if you think about it, if you go in and start making all these adjustments, 
So you go in and you try to subtract interest and taxes and the change of working capital. You might as well, at that point, just use cash flow from operations because you're taking EBITDA and you're making all these adjustments. Why not just get the real cash flow number if you're going to go through all that effort? So there are ways to deal with this if you want something that better approximates cash flow. Let's now talk about the pros and cons of EBITDA. As I said before, it really is just a tool. And so like any tool, there are good uses and bad uses. The pros are that it is quick and simple to calculate. It lets you make quick and easy comparisons between different companies and everyone in finance knows it. The cons are that it is not that close to cash flow from operations, free cash flow or unlevered free cash flow in most cases. Also, this concept of adding back non-recurring expenses can be quite subjective and people often disagree about what exactly to add back. So going back to that quote from The Sopranos, EBITDA is not the true picture of a company's profitability. I would say it is closer to the adjusted cash flows or maybe adjusted normalized cash flows of a company. So in that sense, Paulie here is not quite correct, but they are correct about one other thing, which is that you really should not sell your business if you don't even know what its EBITDA is. So that's about it. Let's do a quick summary now how to calculate EBITDA in more detail. You start with EBIT or operating income on the income statement, take DNA from the cash flow statement. And if you see anything obvious and non-recurring there that has actually affected EBIT, then you want to add it back and you could dig in in more detail if you want. You don't want to add back things like deferred taxes or stock-based comp or gains and losses because they shouldn't affect operating income in the first place. Or in the case of stock-based compensation, you don't want to add it back because it actually affects the company's share count. What does EBITDA mean? It's a way to compare the business cash flow of companies on a recurring basis and ignore their capital structure, taxes, and reinvestment requirements. It's also a way to value them in some cases and a way to assess their credit and their debt repayment capacity. EBITDA is not close to cash flow from operations in most cases, though there are exceptions because interest and taxes and the change in working capital are all quite significant. And the pros and cons of EBITDA, it's quick and simple and good for comparison purposes, but it is not really a great proxy for true cash flow from the business. For the most part, it leaves out CapEx, it leaves out the change of working capital and a whole lot of other things. So in short, Warren Buffett's criticism here is correct, but the metric of EBITDA does still have its use cases. That's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about this and you have some good examples of how to calculate it and what to avoid when you calculate and use it.